A few days ago, I heard the very distressing and worrying news that His Eminence, Kevja Lama Soparimuchi, has manifested illness. We Tibetans believe that highly realized beings do not get sick, but they manifest sickness, meaning they allow the sickness to come to their body, although their mind does not suffer, to convey a message, to push students, to prompt or to express or show the teachings, or to wake up people that can potentially do much more. So we believe that high lamas, and as proven in the past, do get colds and flus and cancer and strokes and paralysis and diabetes and high blood pressure and um, all of those things. But you see, when you're in the human world or the ordinary world, the diseases and the problems that manifest are the same as anyone else. So when a high lama has a migraine, he has a migraine. When a high lama has high blood pressure, she has high blood pressure. But you see, the difference is not the disease. The difference is where it comes from and where it leads to. And let me explain. When a high lama gets sick, the disease may not necessarily arise from bad karma. It can arise from his compassionate or her compassionate mind to convey a message, to teach, to wake people up, to let them know about impermanence. And then when they are sick, then they allow their students to make offerings directly to them, to give them medication, to sponsor their hospital, to give them the correct foods, to, to cook or research the correct remedies, to massage them, maybe to clean their clothes, to clean their environment, offer flowers, words of cheer. You see, those are a high lama's methods for you to collect merit. Why? If we offer flour and medicines, and we offer drinks and foods, and we offer kathas and lights to a statue of a Buddha, we collect a lot of merit because we believe that that statue is representative of a Buddha. Similarly, if we think that our gurus, or we believe, or we have the correct notion that our gurus are Buddhas, and I'm not talking about myself, are Buddhas, and we make offerings of medicine and food and expenditure and massage and taking care of them, cleaning their rooms, it is the same as if we were making it to an image or a statue or a tanka. So therefore, when a lama or your guru or a high lama becomes sick, we believe that they are allowing you an opportunity to collect a great amount of merit. Because the um, biggest or the single most powerful source of the collection of merit is one's teacher, one's lama, one's guru. And that is proven by doing lama chuba tsok every two weeks for the rest of our lives if we have tantric commitments. So when we do tso, we do Lama Chopa Tso or Guru Puja Tso. It's an offering to our Guru, visualizing our Guru as the emanation of all the three jewels of the past, present, and future. So when our Lama becomes sick, we should research how to make him well. We should push and make sure his diet is perfect. We should make sure his environment is clean. We should make sure he gets the medicines. We should make sure that we bring good news to our Lama and that in order to bring good news, we, we have to have transformed ourselves. If we had transformed ourselves, then we would have good news to report to our Lama, to offer to our Lama so that his mind will be happy and therefore heal. So it is, it's a very important offering to serve our Lama when they are sick. So high Lamas, like Kevja Lama Sopa Rinpoche, I do not believe are sick. I do not believe have sickness due to contaminated causes or contaminated karma. I believe that great Lamas like Lama Sopa Rinpoche are manifesting illness, are showing us illness, and giving us a wonderful, compassionate, skillful wake-up call. 
Those of you who have made promises to your Guru, in this case, Lama Sopa, fulfill your promise. Those of you whose Samaya is degenerated towards your Guru or toward Lama Sopa in this case, repair your Samaya and don't break it again. Those of you who wanted to do that retreat but you were procrastinating due to attachments, appointments, work, money, family schedule, well, do your retreats now and offer it to your Guru, in this case, Lama Sopa. So if you were supposed to study up or something or do something or anything, now is the time to do it, to offer it to your Guru. It is better to make offerings to one's Guru while he is alive than to make offerings to one's Guru when he is dead to his statue or stupa. I don't think there will be a, a big difference in, in, in the results of merit when you make offerings to your Guru while he's alive or dead, but I think overall it will be more beneficial while he's alive because if you maintain his life, and make sure he lives long and create the causes for him to live long, he can do much more to help others and benefit others directly. Although an image of our Guru can bless and benefit people, open seeds. For example, I have beautiful statues of Saramchi in all my residences, in all the places that I stay, because it is a blessing. Although I cannot see the previous Saramchi directly, but I can see him in images and in tankas and in pictures. And whoever sees Kebja Saramchi in these images will be blessed by his presence. But I have no choice because he has manifested death. So therefore, while our Guru is alive, it is much more benefit for overall sake to serve, to help, to assist, to overcome our egos, overcome our procrastinations, overcome our laziness, overcome our fears and insecurities, and focus out, in this case, to the Guru. And once we learn to focus out towards our teacher, we can apply that tool anywhere. We can focus out with another person and another person because we have learned the tool of focusing out, how compassionate the teacher is to teach us to focus out. Guru devotion, if you cut, put it in a nutshell to me, is learning to focus out. Now, I don't believe Lama Sopa is sick due to contaminated causes, I believe he is sick because he is manifesting it. So it is up to everyone around the world to create the merits, to do Dharma practice, to renew their vows, to clear their Samaya, and to do the practices that they've been wanting to do and dedicate it for the long life of this Holy Lama. Um, I wanted to relate a little story about myself um, in 1987, I met His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, in Washington, New Jersey. And uh, I just put the video up on that because someone posted on Facebook and I found it by accident, literally. And I requested His Holiness to give me ordination. And so His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, accepted. So in October of 1987, I left the U.S. to Delhi, India. And from Delhi, I took a bus to Dharamsala, which is 12 hours away. And I waited in Dharamsala to receive ordination from His Holiness Dalai Lama until, Oct until December because we need three people to take ordination together, so I had to look for two more people. So there was two other guys and me and three of us. We had a two and a half, three hour audience with His Holiness taking ordination. And that was, it was, well, that's another story to be told another time. After I finished my ordination in Dharamsala, in December 1987, around December, January 1988, December, January, December 1987, uh, January 1988, I took a, a bus up to Kathmandu because I needed to get my visas and my paperwork to go down to India to stay in Gandhian long term. And, um, well, I was stuck in Nepal for quite a while, uh, a month and a half, two months, something like that. And um, I wasn't getting my paperwork done. And I needed to get the visas. And it was very, very difficult to get the visa and a permit to go down to South India. And so um, I was quite distressed because I didn't have a lot of money. And I was just hanging around in Nepal. And I, and I really, really wanted to go to Gandhian. So I walked to Kopan. I was in Boda. And I stayed in the monastery there. And I, and I walked to Kopan with offerings and fruits and all that stuff. And it took me about three hours to walk. Because I walked from Boda to... Uh, all the way up to Kopan, through the back roads. And when I got to Kopan, I went to Lama Sopa's residence, and there was a nun there 
who told me that I cannot see him without any appointment. And if I don't have an appointment, I basically will not have an opportunity today because he has a heavy schedule. So I walked down from his residence in Copan, and um, as I was walking on the road, I saw him with an entourage walking from his teaching. And at that time, Copan wasn't very big. I think he was teaching in a tent or somewhere in the back behind the main gompa. And I, I just couldn't believe my eyes. And uh, Lama Sopo walked towards me on the way to his residence because I was standing on the path. And he says, uh, you know, yes, and how, and what? And I told him who I was, and I told him that I wished to meet him. And he grabbed my hands, and he took me upstairs. And I, I walked past the nun. And, uh, well, of course, she, can, she noticed that uh, I have an appointment now. <laughs> Anyways, I went upstairs, and I told Lama Sopo that I've been waiting for such a long time for my paperwork and my visa and I can't wait any longer because my visa for Nepal was running out and that would mean I have to leave Nepal go back to Delhi and then reapply and then come back again and that was a lot of money it was a lot of time it was a lot of effort and I asked him if there was any pujas so Lama Sopa Rimaji did his divination in front of me it was just me and him in a room and I remember a beautiful image of Lama Yeshi in the back a statue and uh, while I was in awe because I was sitting in front of a living Buddha, Lama Sopa, and he did a divination, and he said to me, um, perhaps you will need a red Singdoma initiation, and you need to do that practice, and then your problems can clear, and you can go to Ganden. So I immediately I got up, I offered three prostrations, I offered whatever I had, and, and a kata, and I requested Lama Sopa with a mandala offering to confer on me red Singdoma. And Lama Sopa immediately says, okay, I will confer it to you in the next few days if it's necessary. I said, what do you mean? And Rinpoche said, well, my divination says there's another way. And then he wouldn't elaborate anymore. So Lama Sopa said to me, let me see what I can do first. And you come and see me tomorrow. I was like, okay. So I bowed and I paid my respects and I touched my forehead to the ground and I left. And I told the nun that I have an appointment with Rinpoche tomorrow. So to, um, the incredible thing is I went back to Bodha, I was in the monastery. Tomorrow morning, a monk came running to my room and said to me, guess what, there's, a, there's the Nepalese officials or the people who are doing your paperwork want to see you. And I was like, oh. And this is waiting for weeks, you know, like nearly one and a half, two months. And I ran over there. And guess what, I got my paperwork done. Everything was fine. And they said that you can go to India now. And I was like, I was flabbergasted. I was totally flabbergasted. So I collected offerings, and I put everything in my bag, and I walked to Copan again. And uh, it was already in the afternoon, I think 1, 2, 8 p.m., and I walked to Copan. Why did I walk? I didn't have money for taxis. And um, that time in Kathmandu, I walked everywhere. You know, we even walked to Tamil sometimes. It's quite a long walk, but it's all right. Sometimes we walked to um, Swayambu. And anyways, I walked over to Copan again, and... Um, I walked upstairs, I walked past the nun, and the nun let me through this time. And I went up there, and the minute I walked in, Lama Sopa saw me, and he was laughing, and laughing, and laughing, and laughing, really loud, really joyfully, and really jovially, very jovial. And, um, and he looked at me, and he says, yes? Why he was laughing? And, he, and I said, guess what? Everything's fine. My visa and what I needed to, what I, my paperwork that I needed and the visa that I've been waiting for for weeks has come through. And the Rimchi looked at me and laughed and said, good, very good. And I was so amazed. But I was a little sad. Because I said to Rimchi, can I, <laughs> can I still get the red signal, mom? Because I, I really wanted to practice. And he says, not necessary now. And I was like, mm, okay, I decided to trust the High Lama. But I really wanted the red signal one because if Lama Sopa tells me that I should do it, I believe him. Anyways, um, he had to go for his next appointment and his teachings, and I, and I, well, I touched my head to his feet again, and I thanked him. And all I can think about is going to Gandhin. So I walked downstairs. I, I bid my goodbyes. I paid my respects to uh, catch Lama Sopa Rimachi, and I came downstairs, and a nun was there. And um, while well, the nun was um, friendly today, you know. And she, she asked me what happened, and I explained to her, and she, and she said something to me. She says, oh, that's what it was. And I said to the nun, what do you mean that's what it was? After I relate to her what happened upstairs. She says, well, Lama Sopa, after you had left yesterday, he did his teachings, he did his courses, 
And at night, he ordered for special tormas to be made by the monks. And he was doing pujas in the middle of the night instead of resting. And I said, oh. And we found that unusual because what was going on? So he did some quiet, he did some pujas on his own. He did some torma offerings on his own in the night. And today you get this news. And in a dawn on me, the Lama Sopa did the pujas for me. For my puchas to go, for my for what I requested and for my visa and my paperwork to go through, I was amazed because I hardly know him. I'm just some monk off the street, and I wasn't recognized as a Rinpoche that time. I was just an ordinary monk. I still am, and um, I mean there was I didn't have anybody, and he did all this for me, just this person off the street, and I was just so amazed, and I realized from the from the nun that he did this. And I found this information out from the nun accidentally. So I was just overwhelmed by his compassion. And I was just overwhelmed by his kindness that he did a puja for me in the middle of the night so that I can go down to Gandhi to study. Um, I have other stories related to Lama Sopa with me because I met him over the years and I've received teachings and initiations from him. But I wanted to relay that story. And I wanted to share that with everyone. And I hope this video does get to Lama Sopa Rimuchi. So I can say to him that I thank him for his help because of his puja, because of what he did. I was able to go down to Gundin much faster and much quicker and basically had much less problems. So I wanted to send my gratitude to Lama Sopa for his kindness for doing this. And he's done many things for me over the years, um, but I don't need to speak about it right now. So I want to thank Rimichi for that. And I wish to let his students know and everybody know what he did. But on, the, on, the, on getting back to the point, the point is this, is that I believe that Lama Sopa, Kyabjim Rinpoche, Lama Sopa Rinpoche, is a very compassionate and genuine practitioner who has high attainments. I genuinely believe that. So I do not believe his sickness is from contaminated causes. I do not believe that. And I wanted to say and send this message that I am very distressed and very worried that Rinpoche is not well. I feel that Lama Sopa has been one of the singular, one of the most singular, powerful people who have brought Dharma to the non-Tibetan worlds. And I think all of us and many of us have received benefit from Rinpoche directly and indirectly. And I know that when I was younger, he was one of my heroes. He is still one of my heroes. And I have tremendous respect for Rinpoche. Tremendous faith. I would like very much for Rinpoche to get well and to heal himself and to clear his stroke and clear his paralysis. And I would like to request Rinpoche to clear his slurred speech because I believe he has full control. I don't really care what other people think. I don't care what people like to look at it, that Rimchi is sick, he needs medical attention. Yes, the medical attention should be offered by us as a means to collect merit. But I don't think that's the real cause. I think that students must mend their samayas. I think students must keep their promises. I think students must do their practices. And I think students must have true guru devotion without any sort of fanaticism. And that whatever we talk, say, act, or whatever we do, must represent our teachers well. Would our teachers say this if we were to say, would our teachers think this if we were to think this, would our teachers do this action if we were to do this? We have to think what our teachers would actually do if they were in our situation. And we may not be as perfect as them, certainly I'm not, but we need to emulate them in the beginning, just like children emulating parents, and then it becomes real eventually. So I do not believe 
Rinpoche uh, cannot heal himself. I believe Rinpoche is a fantastic, attained, and very accomplished tantric master who has become one with his idam. And his tremendous guru devotion, his tremendous practice, and his tremendous blessings is undeniable. So therefore, this video is to express my sadness and my worry that Rimichi has manifested the illness, and I will definitely make prayers for Rimichi to recover. I don't have any powers to make him recover, but I will add my prayers to the pool of merit necessary for a holy lama to manifest his work. In order for a moon to reflect upon a lake, the lake must be still and free of disturbances and ripples and you know um, sediments or murkiness or free of you know greens or algae or whatever floating on top. It must be free of that. But if it's not free of that and the, and the lake is turbulent or murky or not clean, we can't see the moon floating on the surface, reflecting. That is not the moon's fault. That's the lake's fault. We are the lake. The murkiness and the disruption of turbulence is our karma, our mind, and our lack of samaya. It is our lack of faith and lack of samaya. What we need to always do is not to contemplate and meditate on the faults of our guru that we falsely perceive. Or faults of others. What we need to do is focus and meditate on the qualities of our Guru and how our Guru has changed our lives and how our Guru has turned our lives around and how our Guru has changed so many things in our lives. That how were we before we met our Gurus? How did we act before we heard about the Dharma? And that was through the kindness of the Guru. And the Guru spent 20, 30, 40, 50 years as a monk, as a teacher, studying, meditating, practicing, receiving teachings, spending hundreds of hours on, be, on, the, on the ground below, before the feats of their gurus learning the Dharma, that when they speak even one word of Dharma to us, it is 30, 40, 50 years, perhaps even lifetimes, of learning, studying, practicing the Dharma, and giving us the information. So our gurus practice so long and so hard in order to convert, con convey even one line of Dharma to us that they have learned, how compassionate they are. So therefore... This message is specifically for Kevji Lama Sopa Rinpoche. It is also my message to Kevji Lama Sopa Rinpoche that I humbly offer up. And is a message also, if I may, for all people who have precious teachers, that the time might one day end, you cannot be with your teachers anymore. So we should grab the opportunity now. And Kevji Lama Sopa Rinpoche, please manifest your winds, your channels, and your drops. Please clear your winds, your channels, and your drops within your body and move the winds and the drops to clear the paralysis and clear the slurred speech. Your slurred speech is due to us not holding our commitments. Please manifest clarity of speech, clarity, and strength of your body, and live 1,000 years. Please manifest who you are. You are a living Hiroka. And to show us that although we have been errant, that you, in your great compassion, will not abandon us. Please clear your body. Please use the winds, the drops, and channels to clear your body as it states in the commentaries. With all due humility and respect, I request you to live long and to be healthy. <laughs>